Thank you, you all for joining us here today. We are going to be talking about um, organizing and decluttering. And Lisa is here to talk to us about that today. She is an expert at this. Um, we rely on her heavily um, at the bank um, to keep us on track of our organizing. Um, and she keeps every everybody in good order. So um, with that, I am going to turn the meeting over to Lisa. Lisa, thank you so much. Oh, well, thank you everybody for coming. I'm going to try and keep this very simple for all of you because I know how intimidating it can be to tackle a large project. Um, so the, the first step in um, organizing and decluttering is deciding that you want it done, you know, making that commitment mm -hmm. and then determining how far you want to take the project and then envision it complete to kind of help get you excited about it getting done because nobody likes the cleaning nobody likes the overwhelming task um, but just remember that that work is temporary and at the end of it it um, it feels really good and it's well worth your time so um, pick a starting point everyone has that spot in their house or their office or maybe even your vehicle that you are not happy with and you want to organize it you know you've got a lot of junk so pick a starting point and then don't restrict yourself to a deadline for completing it, but rather um, a satisfactory end point where you want the project to, to what you want it to look like when it's completed, so to speak. So the first step, pick your starting point. And, you know, you can say to yourself, oh, my whole house is a mess or every closet I own is full of junk. Just pick one, start small. Um, and uh, you're well on your way after that. The next step is to kind of assemble all of the tools and supplies you're gonna need to accomplish the project. That's, you're gonna need some containers or boxes, trash bags, um, keep them all a smaller manageable size because you're gonna be packing them, whether you're packing them to store them or you're packing them to, to bring them to a donation point or, <clears throat> whether you're you're just going to lift the trash bags and hoist them into your pails, you want them all to be a manageable size. Um, so then you, you set up your containers, you pick your closet or your shelf or your basement, set up your containers, your boxes, and label them, um, either trash or donate, um, give to family or friends or grown children or neighbors or whatever it is, just label your boxes, label your containers, and um, <clears throat> have them right nearby. You'll also want to assemble some cleaning products because you're going to kind of want to clean as you go. As you empty these spaces, you're going to want to dust the shelves or you're going to want to kind of wipe or wash. Um, some of you may even want to paint a closet before you put everything back in it, but have, a, have all the things you need at hand before you begin the project because interruptions um, you kind of drag out the process. So if you have everything together, vacuum cleaner, dusting tools, maybe a magic eraser, whatever it is, whatever you like to work with to clean up, have that, have that with you. Um, some of you met, might like new shelf liners, if it's a closet or drawers or um, a shelving unit bookcase. Uh, shelf liners are cheap. They can be uh, made out of almost anything. You can use Old rolls of wallpaper work really nicely. You can find them cheap at a um, garage sale often. You can use uh, even aluminum foil or wax paper or, or anything you have really. Or you can buy, they, they make some really nice um, contact paper, shelf liners, things like that. But again, have it all on hand so as you, you're emptying and whatnot, you can, you can lay out all your nice new shelf liners or drawer liners or whatever it is before you start putting your products back into the closet or the drawers or your bookcase or whatever it is. Um, some people also want maybe new baskets or um, containers or shelving units or whatever it is that you want in your completed space. Have that all on hand, it really helps it um, move along quickly. So once you've picked your starting point, You've collected all of the items that you need to, to house all the stuff you're gonna take out of there, label all of that, get all your cleaning supplies, it's time to get to work. So 
if it's a closet or even even a shelving unit or dresser, you start at the top and work your way down. And you gotta kind of make quick decisions. Do you wanna keep it? Do you wanna trash it? Do you wanna donate it? Do you wanna pass it on to a family member um, and so forth? So you just, just dig in and again, clean the surfaces as you go so that you're bringing all the dust and dirt from the top down. Um, move steady, don't, don't think too, too much about it. You know that a lot of it is just clutter. You, you, you don't need it, you don't want it. And uh, ask yourself why you're keeping it. You know, have you had a use for it? Do you envision a use for it? Or have you not touched it in months, years? It, it might be time to get rid of it. I think sentimental things are the hardest things to part with. But while you're cleaning, try not to spend too much time really diving into those sentimental items. Maybe have a box for them or um, make a decision. Keep it, donate it. Somebody can use it more than you. Maybe another family member. Um, if you have grown children, maybe them. Usually not, but you never know. Um, so don't spend too, too much time on the sentimental item. Um, you got to kind of ask yourself, do you have a surplus of you know, if you're cleaning kitchen drawers, do you have 20 wooden spoons and three of the same spatulas? You, you really don't need all of that. So you have to kind of just decide, I, if you've got a surplus, time to get rid of it. Do you have duplicate items? Time to get rid of it. Same goes for clothes or outerwear or um, pots and pans and vases and dishes and, and you know, serving dishes and, and all of those things. If you, if you have a surplus more than you're ever going to find yourself using, it's time to get rid of them, sentimental or not, you know. Um, think about if you were to move, if you would you want to pack that item, take it with you, unpack it, and then house it again for years to come? You, you probably wouldn't. So you got to kind of weigh your need for each item. Um, Ask yourself if someone can use them more than you or value them more than you. Maybe you have siblings that it might mean something to if it's a sentimental item, things like that. Just make those decisions quickly, fill your boxes and, and move on. Before you know it, you'll have the whole space emptied. And if you're cleaning as you go, it'll be nice and clean. You might wanna repaint or just sometimes cleaning is, is more than enough fresh shelf liners, things like that. Um, also, if you're cleaning out an office area, even in your house or in your place of work, remember that a lot of documents these days can be scanned or accessed online. So if you're one of those folks who has a file cabinet full of um, old warranties or, <clears throat> or um, how-to booklets or on a, you know, warranty on a toaster that you no longer have or use, you know, clear all that stuff out. Instructions can often be found online. You know, many things nowadays don't even come with an instruction booklet. So paper products, um, you, probably, you probably don't need them. Documents, receipts, you know, if you have a lot of that stuff, you can scan it perhaps. A lot of our home printers also scan. Things like that can be kept on a little portable drive rather than a um, file cabinet. Um, warranties, things like that. Monthly statements, all of that nowadays can be accessed online. So maybe get familiar with how to do that. Um, if you have a lot of um, like legal documents, things like that, consider uh, renting a safe deposit box at your local bank. Uh, another thing I know we do at Chelsea Groton is we offer shred days free to our customers where they can bring in any of their, our customers can bring in any documents and it's free to them to just bring it to that designated area on that designated day and we'll take care of shredding all your doc, documents at no charge. Um, some people hold on to them because they're afraid to put them in the trash and they don't necessarily want to burn them or, or whatnot. So you know, you can look into a community shred day for that type of thing. And you'd be surprised at how many drawers you can empty by just getting rid of things that you, you, you don't need. Um, so let's see, what else do we have? Now, the benefits to this, to doing this and taking that day or that weekend or that week and organizing your things 
I think it's um, it offers a different benefit for, for everybody. You know, some people just have that peace of mind. The chaos is gone. It's clean. It's organized. One of the huge benefits is it refamiliarizes you with what you have. You know, um, sometimes you rediscover if it's a closet clothes that you didn't know you had, you know, or you haven't seen or you forgot you had. Sometimes it's kitchen items that you you didn't know you had. Sometimes it's photographs or or what, whatever it is, rediscovering it, organizing it, and then being able to use it can be very helpful. Um, so that is actually all I have for, for the very basic tips to just get started. Um, I think the first thing is to, again, pick a spot in your house, in your office, or your vehicle, or your barn, or your shed, or your basement, wherever it is, all of it applies. It's just um, committing to doing the project, getting all of your, assembling all of your uh, containers, garbage bags, tools, cleaning products, get it, everything at your fingertips to do this project really makes it go a lot quicker. And, um, if you have family in, in your house, your children, get them involved. They can do the same. I, I think children have a hard time maybe parting with toys, but if they know that they're going to someone that can use them more than them, donating feels really good to adults and children. So you can bring them in on it, um, get the whole family involved, and you can all rediscover things that you didn't know you had buried um, in the closets and things like that. Does anyone have any any questions or ideas to add to that? If you have questions, you can keep them in chat. Oh, what if you're a pack rat? What are su your, your suggestions for overcoming that? Um, you know, that's a good question because I think those of us who tend to keep things, we know the second we throw it out, we're going to need it. I mean, that's Murphy's Law. It happens to all of us. Um, I would, if you have duplicate items, that's, that's the easiest thing to do. If you have a surplus of anything, you probably don't need it. So if you feel like they're useful, share them, give them away, donate them. Um, it, it's just making that commitment, I think, to, to not hold on to things you don't need. Now, that doesn't mean throw everything out organizing is a whole piece to this too. So if you tend to be a pack rat, what you pack organize is a little different so that you can always lay your hands on it. Um, so decluttering is, is one piece of the puzzle, but organizing is the other piece of the puzzle. So if you can get yourself some containers, labels, baskets, things that, that look attractive or that can organize vessels for you to put your things in, and again, clearly labeling so that you know what you have. So if you're a pack rat and you love collecting, you can't part with your monthly magazine subscriptions and you've got stacks of them. Well, maybe have baskets with each different one in there. Again, donate them or bring them to a shred day, you know, so they're disposed of properly, recycling, that kind of thing. Um, if you're a pack rat for clothes, it kind of depends on what you're packing. If it's just everything in general, get help, <laughs> professional help. No, I'm, I, don't, I don't know. I, I, I know the feeling though to, to tend to wanna to hold on to things um, because they'll be useful down the road, organize those things and that may help. And once you start running out of room um, to organize those things, time to purge, time to get rid of so that you can pack some new stuff. But uh, I think keeping even multiple items organized, keeping like with like um, sort of things, keeping things together um, helps again, you know what you have. So you may be less likely to pack another one if you know you have, you know, seven of them already. So um, organizing I think is, is key for even pack rats. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know that I um, am a, a shoe lover. I have a, um, and at this point, I am one in, one out. 
So if I bring any more shoes into the house, one pair of shoes has to leave um, because I am at my um, limit for um, yeah. bringing new uh, storage shoe space. I just yeah. it's not here where I'm at right now. Right. And, and shoes can take up a lot of space in, in, on a closet floor, so to speak. So again, maybe building a little shelf for them. Like, uh, so you've got a couple of tiers of, of shoes. And once those shelves are full, you know, that space is maximized, you know, you might have to purge a few or um, you may resist buying another. Although I know that's really, really hard to do. So again, organizing, labeling, you know, pack your summer shoes away, you know, pack your, your, your boots and your winter shoes away so that you're only looking at the seasonal shoes that you're going to be wearing. So again, here, organizing is, is key so that you're not, you know, overwhelmed without a lot of room. Maybe you can, you know, store the off-season shoes, same with clothes, coats, outerwear, store them, um, organize, pack them, label them. And bring them out seasonally so that you turn over your closet or you turn over your shoes and then you, you've got more room for what you're actually using during that season. Um, that, that can be helpful. Um, same in your kitchen. If you have things that you just do not use, um, not, not quite so much, but I know I bake a lot more in the, in the winter time. So, you know, if you've got a bread maker, you know, you're going to be pulling that out. Or if you have a crock pot, you're going to be using that maybe more. So kind of same in your kitchen, alternate your items so that you, you know what you have, you use them, um, they're stored kind of for the frequency that you use them. Things you don't use very often, put on the high shelves, um, but know what's up there so that you don't, um, so that you, you, you just don't forget and it becomes like a black hole in your, in your cabinet. You, you're going to want to know what's in there. So same goes for clothes, closets, kitchen, organizing, pulling things out, putting them back in. First of all, it keeps it nice and clean. You know what you have. Same with a pantry. Um, you know, you, you might have bought a, a wheat flour for one, one thing you were making. And there is that bag of wheat flour two years later sitting in there. It's probably not any good. So same goes for, you know, clothes, food workbenches, tools. I know my husband has a, I don't know, we probably have 45 screwdrivers. I don't know why, but you know, if he would just go through and know what we have, um, he wouldn't, you know, go and buy that other one just because it's convenient. So it, it organizing, decluttering, it applies to everything from offices to, to food, to clothes, to toys, to children, to adults. Um, it, it helps everybody uh, be a little more efficient, you know, so you're, and it, it also saves money. You're not buying an item that you um, already have because you didn't know you had it. It's buried in a closet or, or whatever. So cleaning out, it, it, it does have a lot of benefits. And again, that varies from person to person, what that benefit is to you. Oh, one of the other benefits is it makes more room. <laughs> so if you are a pack rat, but you've decluttered and you've made some new space, then um, now you've got some place to put it or you've got organized baskets and bins. And um, one of the other things too, to remember to help you stay organized. That's, that's kind of an issue for a lot of us. You know, we go gung ho, we've got this great space and then you, you come home with, you know, new shoes or, or, new mixing bowls or whatever and you just stuff them in the cabinet so yep you got them in there that's good but putting things away as you go um, into an organized spot helps you to stay organized rather than just um, you know pack something in there because it fits so if you've got bins and you've got shelving and you've got baskets and that kind of thing um, you've got some place to put put things and if you're a pack rat and your space is max, that's the cue to go through things again, you know? And, and it, if you do it on a more regular basis, it's not quite so overwhelming. Uh, it's the same if you're, you're cleaning your refrigerator. It, it, you know, if you wait and wait and wait, then there's stuff in there, it becomes a huge task. But if, if you go in there every so often, once a week maybe, and just get rid of the old and wipe it down, and it's, it's never an overwhelming task. 
So trying to stay on top of things once you are organized will help you not have to do it again <laughs> anytime soon, you know? Yeah. Does, so, I, does anybody have any questions for Lisa? Um, the other thing is, is if you, if you've got family members in your household, get them in on it, you know, have, have them take some responsibility. If the mess is not all, all yours, get them in on it, you know, a weekend spent together or a day spent together and everyone participates, then it, then you all benefit and you all feel good about doing it. Um, same with an office. If, if it's, um, a group area or a shared area, you know, designate a couple of hours together where everyone can join in. And if, if you, if you work in an office area that has multiple desks and some people are better than others at keeping their, their space organized, get everybody in on it and, um, you know, designate that, that afternoon for just, Hey, we're going to do it. We're doing it together. We're all in the same boat and it doesn't feel so bad or it doesn't point fingers at anyone, you can all um, kind of do it together. Um, and it, and it, it's not quite as overwhelming if, if folks join in and, and help. Even if you're not the cause of the mess, <laughs> you know, if everybody helps, you're all on equal ground and some people can have some really good ideas and some people can kind of help you and coax you into, no, nope, get rid of it, we don't need it. Um, that, that goes for your house or your office. Um, bringing everyone in on it, it, it does help it not feel so overwhelming. Um, and again, envisioning the end point, um, that's the reward and having more space and, and being organized. Um, yeah. Um, I know in my house, we have a, like um, a bookcase at the top of the stairs and it becomes a dumping ground. Mm -hmm. uh, every time somebody walks into the house, that's where everything ends up. And it's just a pile of things. Do you, do you have any recommendations for helping um, that area more? If you, if you have any space on the top of that bookcase, um, something with slots in it, perhaps, or, or, or small open baskets that can be for each individual that might drop. If it's the kids, maybe they have their own, own basket and that's where, you know, their stuff goes. If it's you, your mail, your keys, your wallet, whatever, or you, or your spouse, or your, you know, other family members. If everyone maybe has their own slaughter basket, and if it becomes overflowing, it's time for them to deal with it. Um, so, so that it's not all heaped into to one area. Maybe you could divide it into like a a basket slot for everyone, or. Um, you know, for the home, they have so many things nowadays that don't look too office-y or cold or business-like. There's so many different kinds of vessels and home goods and Marshalls and TJs and Wayfair and the websites that goes on and on. So you just kind of, you know, look at the size space you have and say, what, what can we do to make this look a little better and a little more organized? Because that habit will probably be really hard to break. That's the spot everyone goes to. They know that's where they threw their mail or they know that's where they threw their keys or, you know, they know that's where they put their notebook, whatever it might be. Um, and let it still be that space. Just having the right vessel to house it. Um, even something with a door or a top. Um, it, it close it when company comes or, or you don't feel like looking at it. Yeah, close that off. But anything that helps it look and feel better to you um, w w would be a great change. Yeah, so yeah, that's a really good point, Miriam. Pick a, pick a spot. If that's a spot that bothers you, do, do something, anything to organize it. And again, bring everybody in and say, you know what, I'm tired of looking at this. What can we all do to make it better? Bring them in, make them responsible for it as well. Um, sometimes I think with the moms or the mom of the office kind of person, it's, it's always one person's or often one person's responsibility. Um, but bring, bring everyone in to help and, and hold accountable and, and get excited or, you know, try and make them realize that we all benefit from it. 
Yeah. Do, you, do you have any favorite storage products that are your go-to? I, you know, overall, I hate plastic anything. Like I have no plastic cups. I even have glass um, containers for leftovers and things like that. But for storage, if you're storing in an attic or a basement, any of the, you know, Rubbermaid totes are excellent. They keep things dry. They usually seal really tight so that things like mice or, you know, critters can't, can't get in them. So often the see-through ones are excellent for different holiday decorations. A lot of people color code their storage. You don't have to go that far, especially if you get the clear plastic storage bins. For inside the house that's visual, I like baskets, different, different, they come in all colors and shapes and sizes. They can be tucked under tables, they can be tucked in shelves, they can be tucked on top of, of places. Um, so baskets work, different baskets work really well. But again, if you don't like the basket look, then you know there's there's everything from fabric, like heavy fabric or canvas type vessels to um to very you know wooden there's there's all kinds whatever your look or whatever whatever you like but for storage itself the, the totes that that seal with a good top mm -hmm. awesome um how about anybody else does i mean does anybody have any questions or struggles that they are having um, it's an opportunity to ask Lisa how she would deal with that. Um, you can unmute or type it into chat and I'm happy to read it to Lisa. I found that I, I'm a hoarder with material and craft things and mm. yarns. And so I had a bit, one of those big Tupperware full of yarns, but it wasn't clear. And I thought, well, I'm going to make a yarn basket. And of course it got out of control. So it's a big round basket of crocheted material. And I put all my skeins in there. And then I thought, oh, my goal was now that I've got this and I can see them was to turn them all into balls. And the next thing I knew I was crocheting little dishcloths at knitting actually and crocheting runners, rug runners with twine and making it in between like indoor outdoor rug. And I found myself going through, because of COVID, I had nowhere to go, yeah. <laughs> going through a lot of craft things that way. And so I took them out of the Tupperware and I put them in baskets that didn't have covers so I could see into them. Yeah. And a needle yeah, point I finished. All my material, I couldn't believe all my material. I had to recover three chairs and I had all this material. <laughs> For years, I was going to do it. And then when you're confined to the house and it's winter, I actually got it done. And it's not a big decluttering, but for me, it was a huge start in my material. And then I got rid of things that had really, you couldn't even use the material for a tiny quilt. It was, it was so threadbare and old, you know. So that's, that's what I did. Yeah. I know a lot of people who do crafts, like you have to start doing one thing and it leads to another thing, you know. That's right. And that's a great idea. You brought them back to where you can see them, lay your hands on them. It, it became kind of inspiring. It used up time and it was really useful and mm -hmm. um, excellent, excellent use of, of your materials rather than them sitting and not, you know, not even looking at them. Same with art mm -hmm. supplies or um, anything, rediscovering what you have. It, it's, it's awesome. Yeah. Definitely. And I do like your idea of doing one small area at a time. Like I did my spice rack and then I did, yeah. it's not even a rack. It's just, it was a cluttered mess that we'd throw, go through crazy every time we'd look for one spice. Yeah. And so I got organized and same with medicines and teas and caught like all these different things in my, just a mess. I mean, you just, you lose track when you're, you know, before COVID working and going to the gym and busy and then yard work all summer things just get cluttered then when you can find your house you're like oh my house needs some little tlc you know all those yeah. spaces so, but i can't do the whole get everything out of the room or get everything out of the closet that's too overwhelming for me yeah. i can just do little things like color coding my clothing and see what i like and don't like anymore and exactly just, but I like that little thing at a time. Exactly. And that's different for everyone. It might just be, like you said, one shelf in a closet. It does not have to be the whole thing. And yeah. you don't have to set a deadline. That's another, um, I think, misconception because it puts too much pressure on. Don't set a deadline. Mm -hmm. Set an end point. 
you know, so if you're, if, if it's that closet and it's that top shelf or whatever it is, or that spice cabinet or that pantry cabinet, there is no time um, frame unless you have a deadline for, for some particular reason. But if you're just working at your own pace, you don't have to set a deadline. You have to set an end point, you know, that you're going to be satisfied with. And whatever that takes for you, that's fine. You know, don't put that pressure on yourself. Just uh, say, I, I can do two hours of this today or, you know what, 20 minutes and I'm going to do something. Whatever it is, there are no, there is no rules or there is no wrong. Um, the, the first thing is deciding you want it done and, and then just kind of tackling it from there bit by bit. Or some people like to just empty that room and then refill it, whatever it is, there is no wrong. It's, it's whatever works for you, especially at home, you know, at work, it might be different there. You know, you've got a lot of other responsibilities that do have deadlines, but most of us can squeeze out, you know, 20 minutes uh, in, in a day to, to tackle something that will make a difference. And everything makes a difference. Every little effort makes a difference. So what do you recommend for people that may be keeping things for sentimental reasons? Like, you know, yeah, that's you can touch baby clothes or, yeah. you know, whatever it might be. Yeah, that is, I was that person. Uh, I had chests full of greeting cards that, you know, over the years, birthday cards and, you know, what, whatever, like literally trunks full. And at one point, I just said, you know, these are beautiful. The sentiments were are, are great. You you remember everything. And I just, I narrowed it down. I, I picked out a few from each special individual in my life or memory and just narrowed it down. And if at my age now, I've narrowed it down a number of times and stuff becomes a little bit less um a little bit less sentimental. Those are the hardest things to part with, be it, uh, you know, paper uh, cards and things or items that were gifts, whether no matter what it is, they're, they're difficult to get rid of. I would just suggest keeping what is most important for those of us or for those of you with small children, you know, be careful what you save from, from school because you will find yourself with an entire bin for every grade. You will have a bin full of every art project and every everything. Keep what's special, you know, keep what you think um, you'll want to show them in, in a few years down the road. Every little A plus test, not going to mean much down, you know, it, 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 it will. And again, it's different for everyone, but just, Keep mementos, do that, and and just don't over keep. Again, it depends on your space. Um, the, the dishware and things like that that have been passed down from grandmothers and stuff like that, use it. I, I would suggest using rather than just leaving it in, in a box or a china cabinet and never touching it. I mean, these things were there for us to, to remember people by, but use them, enjoy them, and um, make them part of your life rather than just stuffed away that you might look at once a year or if that. Um, I suggest using it. And other sentimental items, share them. Share them with your family, your siblings, your children. Um, share them and use them because otherwise you don't even enjoy them, you know? So I'm, I'm a proponent of, of bring that stuff out of the China closet, use it, put it back, but use it, you know, enjoy it. Sunday dinners, whatever it is, birthdays, just bring it out and use it. Um, yeah. Sentimental is tough. Again, pictures, things like that. Uh, in this digital world, there's all kinds of ways to save them and preserve them and store them that don't take up tons of space. So looking into those um, options are a really, really good, good idea. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, anybody else, you can feel free to type into chat or unmute yourself. Um, what about what about photos, Lisa? Because you know we may have um, printed photos from the past. We may have, you know, digital photos like 
I know I have to clean my phone off because I have like 15,000 digital photos on there, you know? So what is your, what do you recommend for keeping that type of, of thing organized? Yeah, um, I'm one of the least technical people around, but I do know enough to know that there are, you know, you can take your phone to some place as simple as CVS or Walgreens, plug it in if you trust it, and, um, you know, select photos, print them, and then delete the rest. The other thing is to download them on the portable drives. That way you can plug it into your computer. Mm -hmm. You can bring them up. You can delete all of the duplicates. I know I have so many duplicates of the same moment. You know, you click, 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 and you, you just, you don't need them. So you've got to commit some time to that. But one of the best, quickest things is to down them, download them to a portable drive. Um, that way you have it if your computer crashes or your phone dies and, and you've got them backed up. But take the time to, to go through them. Delete what you don't want. Um, and then the, the um, what, Shutterfly and Snapfishel, I'm not sure if that's the right name, but <laughs> you can make the, the books. The, the, the books are awesome. I have a sister who, who does that for our family and they're fantastic. And she... Um, kind of records the year for us in, in these books. And sometimes that's just enough. You know, you, you just don't need uh, too, too many, but definitely don't um, mass delete. Be sure you go through them because you can't get those photos back. So that's something to really take time, um, look through them and uh, keep them safe. Whatever, whatever works for you, whether that be printed or it be, um, uh, portable on a portable drive but photos they'll they'll take some time because you can't get them back so be careful with that even, even if you've got like a huge bin of um negatives or the old prints you know from years past be really careful select a handful from each era or from from each holiday or whatever it is and take the time to bring them to um someplace in person or you can ship them off to one of the um, services. I think Kodak does it too. It's a little pricey if you send them off for them to digitize them for you, but it can be done. It all depends on your budget or the volume of what you have. And again, it's one of those things, if you keep up on it over the years, it doesn't become so overwhelming. If you have a box of 30 years worth of photos that you've never done anything with, that's going to be a huge task. Again, implore some help get some family members in on it with you. Everybody select something that means something to them and then take that box off and, and have it digitized or, you know, set up an old fashioned photo album. If you've got a box full of photos, get an old fashioned photo album, date, organize it. And then you've got something to leave on your coffee table and look through and, and share or make an album for a family member. Um, but yeah, photos take a commitment. They're definitely a commitment. And I wouldn't recommend just dumping them. Those you can't get back, so take your time. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, if nobody else has any questions for Lisa, um, I would love to thank you so much for joining us here today. You're welcome, um, happy to be here. On your vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and, um, if anybody has any questions afterwards, um, you received an email from me to log into this event today. So, um, be sure to, you can dash me off an email and, um, you know, I can ask Lisa to, um, answer whatever questions you have. If you get into this and you're like, oh man, I should have asked about that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, thank you so much, everybody, uh, for being here today. Um, and um, I, I look forward to seeing you at future classes. If anybody has any ideas for things or people um, that they'd like to hear speak on different topics, please feel free to um, dash me a line and let me know. Um, and um, Lisa, do you have any anything to end the class with or... Um, just don't be intimidated. If you've got something you've wanted to tackle, just pick a little starting point and just begin. And hopefully momentum will keep you going and you'll see the benefits 
of it and give you a little more peace in, in your world. It, organization equals um, peace. The less chaos, uh, the better. So don't be afraid. Don't be intimidated. You can do it. Awesome. Thank you.